turn there. You at home, we want to welcome you. I want to welcome you at home and tell somebody that, hey, share. Share it with a friend. Tell somebody that the word of God is getting ready to go forward. That's not going to hold you long. Just, uh, I just, I'm on assignment at night. So take the time. Tell somebody, hey, click on to hear word. Get rid of all the distractions and so forth and settle on down. And just hear what the Lord has to say. Amen. As we get that, that midweek daily bread. Oh, hallelujah. God's going to speak to us tonight in, a, in some very special ways. And so um, I'm, I'm excited about what he's getting ready to say to us. And so um, if you're anything like me, you just, you just, you just want to you just wanna go all the way. You just, you just want to get there. You just want to see all your dreams come true and, and, just, and, just, and just thrive, not survive. We, we want to get out of surviving. We've been surviving all our lives. We was taught how to survive. But we want to get to the place where we, we begin to thrive in life. Amen? And so um, if you're there in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, you know, we've been talking about just the characteristics of great leaders. And we, we got to talking about Joshua and, and how uh, God had to deal with him in, in certain areas. And how when it comes to leadership, we learned that just because you're a leader don't mean you know how to lead. We learned that with the children of Israel, only, only two of the tribes got to go in. Uh, ten of them didn't. But, 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 but there's different things that God had to use and do to work on different people. And all of them are great characteristics. And just by the Spirit of God tonight, I want to just point out one that I believe we're going to need. And, 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 and if you don't watch this, what I'm going to talk about tonight, it, 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 if, if you don't think you need it now, you're going to need it later. Because every level you go to, you got to have more of what I'm getting ready to tell you. Um, I don't care how smart you are. You're not going to get nowhere without what I'm, what I'm getting ready to tell you. I don't care how gifted you are. I, I don't care how talented you are. You, you're not, you're not, you're not going gonna to get nowhere without what I'm getting ready to tell you. I don't care how much somebody give you. You'll lose it all if you don't have this ingredient that I'm getting ready to tell you. And what I want to talk about tonight, and especially in the midst of this world we live in right now, I want to talk to you tonight about determination. That, that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about determination. And I want to talk about if you're going to make it right now. No, if you're going to make it. If you're going to make it through, I've never seen... Uh, uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I got a few more years to go before I hit 50, but I'm in my, my, I'm in my mid, I'm on my upper mid 40s. How about that? And I've never seen anything like this. Um, 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 nobody that, 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 that is living it, um, in my families have any seen anything like this. Um, just all of it, man. Let me tell you something. You had to be tough before you got, before this pandemic, all this civil unrest, um, we just living in a we living in a world today is just impotent. I mean, you know, the, when, when did you ever thought that the churches be closing doors? When, when did you ever thought when the house of God shuts down? Where, where, what kind of world are we living in? Where, 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 where uh, the economy is and, and people are at so much unrest. Don't nobody know nothing. What's going to happen? We're in the middle of an election year, and we got 90 more days. We got less than 90 days before we got to vote. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, your vote do matter. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? You know, now watch this. Pastor, how you vote? Well, I can find something wrong with every party. I don't even like talk politics because don't nobody want to hear the truth. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? But, 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 but I will say this, I know who I am and what I stand for. And I got to find whatever that's closest to what I believe. You understand what I'm saying? Because when, when, when anyway, I, I can get, get from there. I, I, just, 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 if, if, if you don't know what I'm going to talk about tonight, you're going to lose it. 
And, and this is where a lot of people make me, this, go ahead and sit down. I just want to just take my time tonight. I ain't even trying to be political correct or whatever, whatever. Good evening. Uh, I need to get this into your spirit. Um, you know, as I, was, I said, God, you got to help me. I, you got to help me with this because, because I, I don't even know, God, where to, where to really start, you know, because, uh, you know, as I look at the different warriors in the Bible, because, you know, God don't call whiners. He called warriors. I'm going to say that again. He don't call whiners. He called warriors. Huh? Ain't nothing like a 50-year-old whiner. Huh? Now, the, you know, so I just said, God, who, 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 who do I know had the most determination of all my heroes in the Bible? And I'm going to tell you, hands down, uh, I don't think none of them could be compared to Paul. I mean, but Paul was a beast. Where you want to chop it up at? I mean, Paul said, I was Hebrews of Hebrews concerning the law. In other, uh, 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 in other words, Paul said, I got more degrees than a thermometer. I, I come out the tribe of Benjamin. Huh? Circumcised on the eighth day. Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, I've been shipwrecked. Beat 39 times less one. Don't know how many times I've been. No, when I had to start looking at who, 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 who I wanted to talk about to show determination, I, I'm telling you right now, Paul was a bad man. But Paul was a bad man, and so, and so the, the, the things I want to share in my spirit today to, to get in you, uh, I want to use something from Paul to help me, to help me get there. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 15. I want to go to verse number, I want to go to verse number um, 50, 57. Now stay with me. I, I, I promise you, if you let me just, 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 just stay with me for a little bit and let me get this into you, boy, this is like a spiritual IB infusion. Paul picked it up. Paul said, look, look, I know everything is crazy right now. I, I know, and I know, and I know things are crazy. There's so much uncertainty. Nobody knows what. People are in situations that they never thought they would be in. But, 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 but I gravitate to what Paul said here. He said, he said, he said in verse number, in verse number 57 of 1 Corinthians 15, he said, but thanks be to God. Which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just stop you right there. For all those who are afraid and are scared to death. I said, thanks be to God. Who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. Stop thinking that the worst is going to happen. Stop thinking that, oh my God, what's going to happen next? I don't know about you, but I know he know the thoughts that he thinks towards me. Huh? Yeah. No, no, no. You, you, you. Here's Paul is saying. Paul says, but thanks be to God, watch this, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, yeah. unmovable, yeah. always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as so much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You know, when you, look at, when you look at the world today, you, you, you see that um, it takes something to maintain things. You, you know, you're trying, to, you're trying to maintain finances. Let me, let me try to maintain finances when, when the economy, you, you have, we, we don't know which way it's going to go. We're trying to maintain. Because once you obtain something, you got to maintain it. You know, we're trying to, we, 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 look, we're trying to maintain our finances. Making sure that, 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 that we, we, we got enough to do what we need to do. We, we, we try to maintain our relationships. Huh? God knows we don't want to fail at none of our relationships. We got to maintain it. Watch this. I found out the only way you're going to make it in whatever you're trying to do right now, you're going to have to be determined to get it done. No, no. Hear me. Hear, hear me what I'm saying. If, if you, boy, I'm telling you, I'm talking to somebody right now. You're going to have to be determined. If you ain't got determination, you, you, I've never seen so many people that want to quit so easily. I've never seen. Everybody just, as soon as something gets challenging. Let me slow my spirit down. As soon as something gets challenging or something gets difficult, we are so ready to throw in the towel. But what we don't understand is God 
knows the end from the beginning. And no matter what comes from the enemy, God going to take it and make it good. Now, let me, let me just talk to somebody that may be in the middle of, con they may be in that place that's in the middle of conceiving and, 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 and uh, 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 they're in the middle of that place from believing to conceiving. I'm in the believing. I ain't conceived yet. I'm, in the, I'm, I'm right there in the middle. I'm, I'm believing and I'm waiting on the conceiving. See, that's a place right there. But I've never seen so many people, when challenges come, they're ready just to say, forget it. Like God did not know what he was doing before the corona. Like God did not know what he was doing before Black Lives Matter. Like God did not know what he was doing before Donald Trump. No, no, we get in a place, well, because we are waiting to conceive, if we don't watch it, it can mess with our believing. But, but let me help you with determination. See, determination, watch this. It, if you don't watch it, it sounds like stubbornness. Oh, can I go there? Same energy, two different applications. Watch this. Stubbornness is the will to stay the same. I'm not going to change. And I'm going to use this energy to stay this way. That's stubbornness. Determination, same energy, but instead of using it to stay the same, determination is applied where I'm not going to stop until it changes. That's the difference between stubbornness and determination. One is, the, is, 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 is trying to stay the same. The other is trying to, and let me tell you something tonight. Don't you stop chasing your dream until you get there. You, you have to be at a place where you refuse to quit until you live the life of your dream. Now, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I said in many days, I go home to my dream house. Yeah, my dream house. I'm married to my dream wife. Won't always marry to her now. I had to, you, you got to be determined to have a good marriage. Y'all don't want to hear me. You got to be determined to have a good relationship. See, the problem is we don't know how to handle, we don't know how to handle the challenges when they come. We, 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 we don't know how to handle the challenges when we come because, first of all, we think that the challenges are there just to destroy us. No, the challenges come because big is scared of you. Them giants in that promised land is scared of you. So, so what happens is the devil do a good job of taking challenges and using them to try to make you quit unknown to you that he's really scared of you. The children of Israel, they were scared. They said, we like grasshoppers. But what they didn't know is Rahab dropped a dime on everybody and said, they heard about what God did for you at the Red Sea. See? See, I come to drop a dime. This is why you got to have determination. Because determination is what's going to transition you from conceiving to believing. But you got to learn how to handle the stuff that comes against you. See, see, the stuff that comes against you is to, is to bury you down, is to put you down. Life will send challenges that will mess you down. I don't care who you are. Life will throw dirt on you. And many people, watch this, have given up on their dreams because life threw dirt on it. Do you know how many people that life threw dirt on and buried? That, do you know how many people whose dreams got buried after the divorce? Do you know many people whose dreams got buried after bankruptcy? Do you know many people whose dreams got buried after somebody dies? No, when life throws dirt at you, 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 you don't let that stuff bury you and make you want to quit. No, let me tell you what you do when life throws dirt at you. You want me to tell you how to handle challenges? When life tries to throw dirt at you, shake it off. Huh? I said, every time he tried to throw some dirt on top of you, shake, shake it off. Huh? I had to sing that all the, one day I had to just keep, shake it off, shake, shake it off, 
Say, you know, what am I saying? I tell you like this. You better learn how to encourage yourself and recover quickly. Don't learn. Don't shake it off here. If you don't learn how to shake off challenges, how to shake off, this stuff will bury you. Um, Paul is sitting here said, first of all, let me put everybody in check. We got the victory through our Lord Jesus. But then he said, be steadfast. Wait a minute, that's something you need to do. No. At the end of the day, God only blesses what you do. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and after you finish wilding in your pity party, guess what? Something else still needs to be done. So, 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 and God is just waiting for you to make your move. No, Paul is sitting there saying, that's the first, but Paul said, be steadfast. Stead, steadfast, steady. Fast. Quickly. Sounds like Sounds like encourage yourself and recover quickly. He said steadfast. Huh? Not stay stuck. Huh? Pastor, what you mean? You got to be determined to make it. You got to be determined to say, I'm not going to let this situation keep me from what God got for me. Because I know that this uncertainty trying to make me feel like lack is in my future. But lack can't be in my future because I'm a child of God. Because he told me, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So tell me how the lack can be in my future. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. So tell me how lack can be in my future to give me an expected end. How can lack be an evil? lack trying to come to me, all God going to do is take that lack and make it into good. Because let me tell you something. There are some things that won't be developing you except you go through some trial to develop it. There are some things. Let me talk. Let me talk. Let me talk. There are some things that only a trial will produce. There, there are some things that if you had not went through what you went through, you wouldn't be able to be who you are today. And there's some things that God are carrying you through right now to prepare you for what is to come. But you must be determined. You're going to have to be determined. Paul, Paul was determined. He was the look. If you go back, scoot up. If you scoot up in chapter in verse, I mean in, in 1 Corinthians 15. If you scoot up to the ninth and the tenth verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 9, Paul said, "For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not I'm I, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle, I, I, because I persecuted the church, but by the grace of God, I am what I am." And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored. I did what? I labored. I did what? I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was within me. Paul said, I came in at the bottom. But I worked harder than all of them because I was determined. I was determined not to stay shipwrecked. He still would have been shipwrecked if he hadn't been determined. He, he still would have been thrown if he hadn't been determined. And I'm telling you, I come by way of the anointing of Jesus Christ. If you want to make it right now, if you want to make it through this uncertainty, you better get some determination in your cup. You got to be determined. You got to be determined. That's the labor, he said. Labor pains is a good thing. Anytime there's labor pains, must be in some getting ready to birth. Maybe, maybe why you're going through what you're going through because God trying to birth something. Maybe that why you're dealing with what you're dealing with is because God trying to birth something. But let me help you, sweetie. There are some things that only can be birthed through pain. Oh, praise Him for your pain. Oh, praise Him for your pain. I said, praise Him for your pain. Pain produces promises. Pain, pain, oh yeah. Pain, pain produces, pain produces blessings. That's, that's why God says, this is why you got to push when you're in labor because something is being produced that you can't see right now. But if you are determined, you will see it. But if you quit, let me tell you what happens. This is why I learned how not to go through, but to grow through. 
I said, I learned that. I learned how not to go through, but I learned how to grow through because I knew God was developing something in me. But let me help you uh, for those who want to quit. If you quit, Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, Paul said in, in verse number 58, therefore, uh, beloved brethren, but ye steadfast, unmovable, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord for so much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Let me, let me tell you something about your labor that's not in vain. It's like that labor that you had when you was in pain. Let me tell you what happens when you quit. Because that pain is trying to produce something. But when you quit, do you know what you do? You throw your pain away. You throw your pain out the window. When you quit, everything you went through to give it birth, you just throw it out the window because it was your pain that was causing it to be produced. You paid a price for it. Why don't you want your prize? Because you don't think God going to do it? You must misinterpreting the challenges. They are weapons, but they're not they are weapons that formed against you, but they don't prosper. So you must don't understand that God loves you too much to throw you away, to let the devil take you out, to let the devil get rid of you. No, no, you're you going to make it. You're too valuable, but you're going to have to be determined. You'll never see the baby if you ain't determined to go through the labor. You got to be determined. <laughs> You got to be determined to, to have a good marriage. Let me talk. I said you got to be determined. Marriage is something you got to work on, invest in. But if you do it right, it'll produce something. But you got to be determined. I had to, I had to be determined to make it work. I couldn't quit after every challenge. And boy, did we have some challenges. We had some challenges. You're talking about we've been together now for close to 30 years. You think the devil let us go through un, 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 untested? But I had, I, I can only speak for me. I had to be determined to make my marriage work. I had to make sure that I put effort and energy. Stop telling. And look, and look, look, look. I'm a little hard on the men. I know you women think I'm hard on you all, but I'm really hard on the men. Because the harvest that you see is only come from the seed that you sow. See, because God gave man the seed. I said he gave man the seed. Then he gave them instructions. Now, love her like I love the church. So, so watch this now. That's an act. So, I, 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 I you know, because men love to blame it on the woman. But I, and she does have her part. But I'm, but, but I'm talking from the standpoint of your office. Because you can say what you want about the church at the end of the day. Who they going to deal with? So watch this. I got to make sure that I'm handling my responsibility. So when you look at your marriage, I first deal with the man. You got to be determined to have a good marriage. You got to put in that work. You got to put in work to have a good marriage. Huh? Well, I had a young boy come ask me one time, Lord have mercy. I won't try to go here. I won't try to go here. I had a young boy come to me one time, and he had just got married, and he had questions. He said, pastor, pastor. He said, how many times your wife supposed to have sex with you a uh, um, week? I said, yeah, I can tell you just got married. <clears throat> he said, how many times are you supposed to have sex a week? You're married now. Married. Watch this. Watch this. I said, I don't know. I, I stopped having sex in my 20s. So he looked at me, he, he was like, man, I must have said something wrong to him. I must have said something wrong to him. I said, yeah, I, I stopped having sex in my 20s. So then he thought he was going to get political correct. He said, well, well, Pastor, how many times do she supposed to make love to you during the week? I said, I don't know. I stopped making love in my 30s. He said, what, what? What, what, what? I don't understand. I said, see, boy, when you get my age, we done with sex. We done with making love. We make movies. Yeah, yeah. We, we make movies. 
matter of fact, I started one this morning. It call, it's called Wait Till I Get Back. Huh. Oh, yeah, I started it this morning. I started it this morning around about 10 o'clock at the nail salon as I sat with her and gave her quality time getting their feet done and nails done together. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. I said, that was scene one. Huh? That was scene one. When I got to scene two, it was at the Waffle House sipping coffee, looking out the window, talking about how God done brought us so far. That was scene two. Scene three was an appetizer when we got back home for scene four. Now, I believe the rating done changed somewhere because it started going from PG to R between scene three. I don't know what going to happen in four because I don't make love no more. I said we make movies. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> woo! Woo! Boy, when you get there, I'll show you how to put it together, boy. Why? Because I'm determined to make this thing work. No, no, we got to be together. Let me go ahead and put some work in this or I ain't going to last. I'm not going to last. Listen, listen, listen. You'll never be happy till you learn how to love yours. You can look at my house all day long, but till you learn how to love your house, you'll never be happy. You can look at my woman all day long, but until you learn how to love yours, you'll never be happy. Huh? You can look at somebody else's man all day long, but until you learn how to love yours, you'll never... No, you gotta learn how to love you right where you at. You expected, oh my God, you expected somebody else to love you. How are they gonna love you when you don't love you? You gotta find something to love about you. You can always find something wrong about you, but find, that's what I do. I find what I love about me. And sometimes you need to just tell yourself what you love about you. Why the devil always reminding you of what you ain't got or what, what, what you need to do. Tell yourself, yes, I love you with your smooth self. Huh? I love your swag, boy. Boy, you confident, boy. Everybody else got the sleeves on. You take yours off. Huh? You do you, don't you? I don't understand how you do you, but you do you. you. And watch this. And can't nobody do me like me. That's why it's all right with me. Huh? No, I'm happy in the skin I'm in. That's why we got so many self-esteem problems. So many, so many, so many, all this kind of stuff, voids that need to be filled. All these voids. And then you're getting married. You got to do all this building. All this building because the cars was wrecked. God ain't meant for us to go through all that. Huh? Yeah. I remember it was two, two virgins in counseling session. I'm dealing with them. And it was two virgins. I thought it was a beautiful thing, but, but, but the wife had another woman in the street. That's why you got to be careful about the company you keep. Keep asking her, well, how are you going to marry him? You don't know if he's good in bed or not. You might get disappointed. I said, if she a virgin, whatever she get was the best she ever had. What's she going to compare it to? Because that's the way it's supposed to be. This is why we had to build so much when we got married. Because so many done had to deal with. And now you lay down and you compare. And God knows he can't keep up with all of them. I mean, he may have it on one side, but man, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't Superman. I mean, you ain't going to get all of it. She's not going to be a gourmet cook, a beauty model, and a masseuse. You need that when you get older, boy. You need to know how to. I don't went somewhere. I don't went so far out here. I need to come on back here there, y'all. Let me come. I got, I got to bring this. Lord, y'all know where y'all don't. Okay, see, see, for those at home, I flow in the prophetic. And see, when I get to picking up stuff, woo, when I get to, I said, when I get to picking up stuff, ain't no telling which way the spirit go lead me. So, hey, it is what it is. Papa said it was his grace. He said, but I am what I am. I am what I am. That's what he said. I am what I am. That's the way you got to be when you, look, I'm not settling, man. I'm not settling. I'm not stopping. No, pastor. Why you ain't protest? Because he called me to profess. Pastor, 
Why you ain't just shut down? We're obeying the law. The law said we ain't got but 10, that's all we're going to have. The law said we got 50. Well, I'm going to open up the hospital of the sick to the 50. Because the worst thing you want to do is be sick, go to the hospital, and they ain't got no bed. Pastor, do you expect us to come to church? I don't know. That's between you and your God. But when I asked him, what should I do? He told me, people on the front line ain't got no choice. Hey! Hey! No, y'all don't like me. Y'all don't hear me. I don't have no choice. So if I get it, I got it fighting. If I get it, I got it protest, professing. If I get it, I got it swinging for him. I'm on the front line, baby. I ain't got no choice. That's me. You do what you got to do. Do you. I'm going to do me. Because... Not being determined is not how I got here. It's being, it's being a place where you say, I'm not going to let this beat me. It's being at the place where I, I told God, you said, you, 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 this is one of the prettiest women I know. I told God, if I got to live with her for the rest of my life, it's not going to be in misery. No, I'm going to wake up happy every day. Huh? Huh? I said and in between the beauty salon, uh, the, the nail salon and the Waffle House, I serenaded her. Huh? Threw that J Moon on her. <laughs> Y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> huh? No, I wanted her to know it won't too hard to see that she the one for me. You hear me? I wanted her to know that. I wanted her to know that. Huh? Yeah, spending time would always on my mind. <laughs> nothing come before you but time. Nothing. <laughs> huh? Ain't too hard to see that you're the one for me. <laughs> Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, see? <laughs> huh? That's why I can't get enough of your love, baby. I can't get enough. Huh? No, what, uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to teach people how to be determined to make it work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you got to put work in. No, you got to put work. Stop telling me you want to be rich and you don't want to put work in doing that. Stop saying you want to live like this and you don't want to put the work. Do you know the work you got to put in? I told Pastor Key on that way here. I said, I've been doing it so long. I said, I don't, I don't even know how long I've been doing it. Pastor Key said, people who are called can't count. I said, huh? She said, people who are called can't count. You can't count how many times when you call. You can't count how many times you're going to have to do something when you call. See, when you call, you can't count how many times you done been down at the church. Not when you call. See, I know I'm talking to people you may not be called. I'm just trying to tell you who I am and where I'm at. I got a call on my life. I, 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 I can't count how many times I got to show up. No. Even the Bible says you can't count how many times you forgive. What is it, 70 times 70? You, you can't count that when you call. No, no, no. See, what I'm saying is this thing I'm talking about tonight, this determination, if you want anything to produce, you're going to have to be determined to do it. Jesus. You got to be determined to do it. If you're not determined, you will miss the promises of God. That this is a, that Paul, Paul had something on the inside of him that, 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 that caused him to deter everything that the enemy tried to put in his mind. Determine. Maybe that's determined. De deter. In other words, Paul said, I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. See, when he said, I'm fully persuaded, he was saying, I'm fully determined. No, no, and God backed what he did. Because God came back nothing except what you do. So if you don't do nothing, God came back nothing. That's why quitting is never the answer. But because you do something, God backs something. 
We chose to be determined to grow through this. And that's just what we did. Because since March, we done hired four people, added almost $200,000 worth of audio and video equipment, and ready for the next place God wanted to take us. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of people deciding to, to, to go other ways, in the midst of folk not coming in, in the midst! In the midst, it was determination. And God says, that's what I need to trust you with the next assignment. Because I can't take quitters where I'm trying to go. I can't take somebody every time they get a challenge, they get in the wine and I need a warrior. No, 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 this is how you lead, daggone it. No, this is how you lead. You don't lead in the back. You lead from the front. No, that's how you lead from the front. I'm leading from the front line, baby. Do I deal with fears? Absolutely. We all got fears. Am I ready for change? Please. We all ready for change. But what do I got to do in the meantime? I keep moving. I, I, I proceed with caution. I, I, I. I, 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 I keep following God's directions because he knows the thoughts he thinks towards me. God says, if you let me, if you let me, I'll show you what's happening on the other side. Jeremiah 29, 1 through 10. We always like to go straight to 11. But he told us 1 through 10, he said, I know you're in bondage. And this ain't going nowhere. Because for the 70 days, 70 years, and not a day before. In other words, God has already set a specific time for this pandemic to end. This pandemic was had a time to stop when it started. But God told them children of Israel, not a day before Babylon, is not a day before. In other words, God said, you can pull these 70 years down to the T. He said, but, but how you choose to handle it? He said, I want my children to go ahead and build houses, make babies, make movies. I want my children to go ahead and plant vineyards. I want them to do that. Watch this, because I know the thoughts I think towards you. In other words, God said, look, everybody else slowing down because they're scared. But I want you to have enough faith. I want you to have enough faith where you keep believing me in the midst of what things don't look like. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. I know it's hard. I know it's challenging. I know you never did this before. Hey, 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 I told you on Sunday that, 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 that I'm the only pastor in my family on both sides, mama and daddy, as far as either one can remember. I mean, talk about breaking a generational curse. What kind of curse is that when you got to break curses on both sides? You don't think he wanted me to quit? You don't, want, you don't think he wanted me to go back and get high? Do you know how many times he has tempted me? You don't think he wanted me to go out there and, and fall with a, with a strange woman? You don't, you don't think he come after me? You got to be determined. See, no matter what I got to endure, no matter what I come up against, I'm determined that I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm determined. I'm determined that no matter what, if I go down, I'm going to go down professing. I'm going to go down claiming the name of Jesus. No, no, no. I cannot be afraid to put my life on the line. You know why? You know why I can't be afraid to put my life on the line? I'm going to say it like I feel it. I'm going to get in trouble, but I'm going to say it like I feel it. You know why? Because Christ didn't. Y'all ain't going to like me. I'm just talking about me. You do you. And I'm cool with that. I'm not coming against that. No, because the truth of the matter is, if I was in a situation and I knew that this is what I needed to do, I'm going to do what I got to do. You understand? But I'm just talking to you from which I stand. And as long as I can do it, I'm going to do it. Now, if I couldn't do it, then I'll just do whatever I can do or have somebody else to do it. But as long as I, Paul said it's grace. So what it look like if he didn't grace me to do it? Y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. So you're healthy. You, 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 you got a job. You got tides. 
you, 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 you got health and strength. You might can come help somebody else. You, 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 you young. You, 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 you don't have no underlying health issues. We are practicing safe distancing. We are taking temperatures. We are doing everything that we, we possibly can do, but trust me, it can happen anywhere. What am I saying? I'm not coming after nobody. I'm just telling you, I can't live in fear. I, I can't live in fear. Now, I will live in wisdom. Because the Holy Ghost tell me, put a mask on, I'm putting it on. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what I am doing right now, I'm preaching the gospel. Why? Because I'm healthy. As far as I know. Ain't none gave me a check otherwise. And I'm going to do this until the day I die, until I can't do it no more. See, because my, my 50-some-year-old is looking at my 40-some-year-old and saying, boy, please don't quit. He said, boy, look, your grandkids depending on you to make it, Big Daddy. Your, cran your, cran your, grandkids, your grandkids need may need some college money. No, 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 no. I'm depending on you to make it. No, no, the kingdom needs some wealthy men. The kingdom need to see some wealthy people. The, the kingdom need to see God's glory on some folk. No, don't stop, man of God. Don't quit right now. Not right now. Come on, let me increase you more and more. Just walk with me, see? See, some of you all, you, you can't stop walking with God. I know you don't understand me. I got to preach from which I come. See, I come from a place where God says, I don't care, come hell or high water, I can't quit. I, I, I come from a place that is too much on the line for me to quit. I come from a place, no matter how scared everybody's around me, he called me to be the leader of the tribe. So when I wake up in the morning, I got to wake up rowing and let my family know you're going to be all right because daddy is on the scene. See, I can't quit from which I come. I got too much in stake. God is riding on us to get it done. Others are falling by the wayside, but I'm telling you right now, those who stand, you will see the salvation of the Lord. You keep pushing until you get that certification. Don't you stop till you get that license. I was talking to a young man. He was getting ready to go buy a new truck. But he didn't have his contractor's license. And he came to me and he said, Pastor, I got the money to go get the truck right now. They got me a sweet deal. But he didn't have his contractor's license. Now, mind you, what I said to him could have looked like I was holding him back. But it all depends on how he took it. I said, if I were you, I wouldn't get the truck. Now, I know his heart was set towards it. But he listened to his pastor. Let me, let, me, let me tell you why I told him. I said, you buying that truck, let me tell you what's going to happen. If you get that license, that license will get you a job where you need that truck. But if you get you a truck, that truck can't get you a job that you need that license. And I'm going to teach you how to do it for sure. S-U-R-E. And not for show. S-H-O-W. But that takes determination to do the foundation and the lead work. Many of us, we don't want to set foundation. The Bible says, the Bible says, and I'm getting ready to close. The Bible says that, that you're supposed to uh, uh, devour the prey in the morning and divide the spoil in the evening. That's what, in other words, you, you, you're supposed to go get it. Why God done graced you with health and strength. I told my son the other day, I seen him jump up on one of the trucks, and I just sit there and admired his youth. Because I can't do that no more. I just can't jump up on the truck. I, I, I seen Brother Ricky take one foot and put it on the back of a dump truck and stood all the way up. I said, good, good, God almighty. I don't know what kind of knees he got, but mine would have said, uh-uh. <laughs> I'd have put my knee up on that stand. Mine would have said, what you trying to do? Huh? Then the next thing I know, I'm in the house trying to explain to Pastor Key what happened. And while I'm trying to explain what happened, my knees start talking. I'll tell you what happened. You remember the eye, the eye start talking? I'll tell you what happened. Oh, big boy here thought he could hop up on this truck. And you see, yeah, no. No, no, I'm not going to waste my youth. But I'm glad I hopped up on that truck. You know why when I was young? Because now he got a truck he can hop up on because I hopped up on one too. Because I hopped, he can hop. You, you understand what I'm saying? You got to be determined, man. 
You, you don't, you got to be determined in your youth. Instead of us, when we young, instead of devouring the prey, uh, uh, devouring the prey and dividing the spoil in the evening, we want to divide the spoil in the morning. We want to bling and ain't got no good credit. We, 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 wanna, we want rims on the car that's, that's more expensive than the car. Huh? No, we, 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 we get it backwards because, and, and sometimes I blame it <laughs> from the pulpit. Because we got a good way uh, from the pulpit telling people, spin around three times and God going to make everything all right. Like you ain't got to do nothing. Because at the end of the day, God only blesses what you do. He can't even give nothing back to you if you don't give. He can't even come to you if you don't draw nigh to him. God blesses what you do. God help those who help themselves. So what I'm telling you, if you want to make it to that next place you're trying to go to, you're going to have to have something called determination to get there. And whatever it is that you dream about having, it's going to take determination for you to get there. I've said a lot of things tonight, and um, I've shared a lot of things tonight, um, but, 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 but what I'm trying to install with you now is an ingredient you always going to have to use if you want to stay blessed. You're going to have to be determined. God don't start nothing that he ain't intended to finish. What you got to learn is what is he intending to do in the midst of all this? I thank God that I have a spirit of determination. I, 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 I'm, you ain't going to beat me. No, you ain't going to beat me. I ain't going to let you beat me. Huh? And I don't know. I can't tell you where I got it from. Some of my determination was produced out of pain. Some of my determination came from being abused. Mentally. When people tell you that you can't do something. I don't know where I got all my determination from. But even if it came from a bad place, God took what happened and made it good. Because now, when I want to quit, I remind the enemy of my pain. No. And I won't take for granted where God has me. See, I remember them cold mornings trying to warm up equipment and trucks and trying to go out there and make it. I, all that stuff I keep in me. I keep in me that grind that it took to get to where I'm at. I keep it in me. See, because just because you do something to get it, you must do it to keep it. That's why you shouldn't start nothing you can't finish. If you know you don't like to cook, don't start cooking for that man. Tell that man straight up, I don't like to cook. So he won't get in his spirit and think that you're going to cook. Don't lie. No, what, what am I saying? No, no, don't do stuff that you, that you don't have the determination to keep doing it. God rather for you not to even start it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, you can't be satisfied until you get things the way you want it. I don't know what it is that you want in life. I don't know what it is that you may dream and you desire. But I just come by this evening to tell you, if you want to birth it, it's going to take determination to get it done. Stand to your feet.